Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Can you remember who you were before the world told you who you should be? Charles Bukowski. Consider product placement with Just Minding My Business Media, LLC, with our presence on all major podcast platforms with listeners in over 200 countries. Visit our website at jmmbmediallc.com to discover other digital products to 10X your business. Jonathan Rosenfeld is an attorney in Chicago, Illinois, concentrating in cases involving serious injury and wrongful death. Mr. Rosenfeld is the founder of Rosenfeld Injury Lawyers, LLC, where he has managed to consistently grow his business 10 to 20% annually in the wake of additional competition and headwinds from the COVID-19 pandemic. At a time when other law firms are struggling to stay afloat, Mr. Rosenfeld continues to expand his law practice into emerging areas that help stabilize his revenue in these uncertain times. When it comes to running a business, Mr. Rosenfeld is keenly aware that the race is indeed a marathon and successful people need to establish a solid foundation to set themselves up for success. Welcome, Mr. Rosenfeld. May we call you Jonathan? Absolutely. Please. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. Wow. It sounds like we're going to get some some good marketing tips. So everybody who's listening or watching right now or going to watch, get the pen, get the paper, and let's start taking some notes. (laughs) (laughs) So... Let me just ask, how did you become an, a, a, an attorney? What what led you there? Great question. Uh, you know, I, I went to college. Uh, I went to actually college in Pennsylvania, and I started in the, uh, the business program there, and I quickly realized that uh, at the time, the curriculum included a lot of computer programming, which I, I really had no aptitude for or real interest in, and uh, anyway, let's just say I didn't do very well, uh, in the computer programming class. And, uh, I gravitated towards a, a journalism, uh, program. And my parents said to me, that's great. You've got this degree in journalism. What are you going to do with it? And they said, well, what about law school? And I, you know, being the obedient, uh, child at the time, I, I went to law school. I really had no idea what I was going to do with it, but it seemed like it was a, a great background, uh, no matter what you did in business and, and, you know, or if you decided to practice law. So I did that. And, you know, yeah, I wound up working at a, uh, a personal injury firm after my first semester of law school. And I had no background in personal injury. I didn't know anything about it, but what I quickly learned was that unlike other types of law where you sit at a desk and you sort of, you know, spin your wheels and you, you basically build time uh, from, from here to infinity, uh, personal injury, there was a, a beginning, a middle, and an end to every case. And that really resonated with me quite a bit. Um, so I love the fact that I could, you know, some, I could meet with someone one day you know, after an accident, after something happened, we could work through the issue. I could work, take that case from, you know, right after an incident happened all the way through the time the case was resolved, either by settlement or trial, um, which was great because I just felt like, you know, there was some closure to things. The other part of the, the area of personal injury that really resonated with me was the fact that there was really a tremendous amount of entrepreneurial skills involved. Um, You could be, you know, you basically, there was a huge incentive to bring in business, 
to bring in as much business as you could. There's really no cap on how much money you can you can make uh, if you're willing to hustle and get out there. Um, it's really a you know the sky's the limit. Um, and then I quickly learned that you know it was great you know networking and everything, but in order to really grow the business, um, I really had to move elsewhere. And so you know I've tried different marketing tools over the years. I've pretty much done almost everything: TV, radio. Um, but the one thing that sort of, you know, has always worked for me and I've always come back to uh, was online marketing and digital marketing. And that's sort of where I am today. And that's where I spend quite a bit of my time, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, business generation. Other attorneys, you know, they may move to TV or they may put billboards up or whatever it is. Uh, and there's different ways to, to do it. Uh, but for me, I found that digital marketing websites really, you know, they're very effective, frankly. And if you are willing to put the work in, you know, it's a tremendous advantage, um, regardless of is, if it's law, if, if it's uh, if you're a locksmith, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's certain things that you can really get across to people um, really effectively online that you really can't do in other mediums. And that's really what I put my my energy into now. Okay, digital marketing. And I have to agree with you because, you know, I started, I think when we first start businesses, we really don't know what works and you have to really just test the water, so to speak. And one of the things that I'm quickly learning, just what you said, digital marketing is is really huge you know the people that you can pick up and you know for a long time i i didn't set up my google website and so one day i just sat down i'm gonna set this up and get it on there and put some stuff on there and really focus on it and i can already see the growth and that's a free platform you know if if you're willing to put work into it you know, there's just the sky's the limit. Um, you know, a lot of times people, you know, will say to me, oh, you know, I've tried doing a website or I tried doing a blog. Ugh, it it did, didn't work out for me. And, uh, you know, my, my, my response is always sort of like, well, how long did you do it for? Yes. <laughs> number one. Uh, and number two, you know, I mean, the truth is, is that, you know, the landscape is more competitive now than it was, you know, five or 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, and in order for you to really get some traction, you're going to have to, you know, one, you're going to have to create content that's basically better than your competitors. It's more comprehensive than your competitors. And, and number two, you know, it just has to be more of it. You know, if you have a website that's that's got five pages and your competitors got 100 pages or 200 pages, you have to start, you know, ramping up the the content in order to to catch up to that point. Um, you know, and it different it different depends on the industry. You know, certain industries there's still quite a bit of uh, you know opportunity there, and there's there's really opportunity everywhere. But um, you know, a lot of times people just throw in the towel and they say, oh, you know what, I did a couple blog posts. You know, I wrote a few hundred words, and it didn't really do much. Um, and I sort of laugh because, you know, if, uh, you know, I've spent so many, so much time, so much effort, you know, really creating content in the first place, but then revising the content um, after it's been in place for maybe six months or a year or whatever it is. Um, there's really no such thing as an end game in this. Um, you know, to a lot of people, it's frustrating because, you know, they're like, well, you know, I, I, can you put, get a website together and can you just sort of set it and forget it? My response is you could, it's not going to really do you any good though. You know, it, it's, again, it's just a process and it's just has to be part of your, your business model. You have to invest the time on a regular basis to create new content and go back and revise old content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's hard work. No matter what, no matter how you cut it, it's always hard work. So my next question for you is, how come, how do you think, why do people not see, take this seriously? Uh, 
what do you think are the, the reasons why people don't take these pieces seriously? You know, I, I don't, I don't really know why. Uh, my guess is, is that, you know, until you have a, a taste of success with anything, um, you know, success sort of breeds success. And when you have, you know, you see what opportunities are available, it, it sort of inspires you to sort of keep going and, and, you know, motivates you to sort of, you know, Hey, this was effective. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's, you know, let's start building out frequently asked questions. Um, you know, I, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people um, have is they just feel like they're almost capped in what they can do. And, you know, my, my sort of whole philosophy, you know, uh, long, long time ago before I really had any knowledge about any of this stuff was just sort of keep going and, you know, keep going, keep grinding, keep, keep rolling. And, you know, it sounds real primitive. Um, and it is, but the truth is, is that if you're just willing to keep going and creating and doing stuff and your competitor is just, you know, sitting back, relaxing, uh, you've really got a, a tremendous upside there. So, um, you know, I don't know why people, maybe they're honestly, not everyone's meant to be a uh, entrepreneur or a business person, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if you're not willing to, to go out and hustle, um, you know, God bless you. You may be a great person, but this may not be the right work for you. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's so true because it takes a, it takes a, a certain person to be an entrepreneur. You have to kind of already see yourself there. And then every day is the work to get there. You know, you have to kind of see it and believe it that you can, you can accomplish it yeah. as long as you continue to move forward and be okay with the, the setbacks. Cause you all, you know what they say about setbacks. <laughs> <laughs> they will come. <laughs> yeah. And it's all about the, it's getting you ready for the success, because you can't have success without failure. They kind of work hand in hand because if everything went smoothly, what would you really learn? What would well, you I mean, again, I mean, you know, I, I'm not even a big basketball fan, but uh, you know, you look at the basketball greats, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you, you, you see what Kobe Bryant has done or something, you know, that guy was in the gym every single day at four o'clock in the morning. Okay. And again, it's, you know, you don't have to be Kobe Bryant, but you know, again, it just shows that if you're willing to put the work in, put the extra effort in, it goes quite a long way towards your success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, a lot of times some business owners, you know, they compare themselves to others. So how do you, kind of step away from that kind of mindset and really focus on what you're bringing to the table uniquely? That's, uh, that's an interesting question because, you know, if you compare yourself, uh, I don't know, there's some, someone who's way smarter than I am uh, has a quote that, you know, the definition of uh, something along the lines of, you know, unhappiness is, you know, comparison to others, uh, you know, and, you know, if you, if you surround yourself by people who are, you know, more successful than you are, you may feel like, you know, you're, you're somewhat of a failure to a certain degree. Um, but the truth is, is that, you know, every business, every industry, you know, there's, it's, you know, at its most basic form is a competition. Um, you know, you have to do things, you know, better differently than other people. Um, and, you know, now some people, you know, they may, you know, get a, their point across very effectively by thumping their chest or by, you know, um, you know, talking, you know, with a loud voice or, or whatever it is. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to find something that really resonates with, you know, your personality, because I really think that um, increasingly, I think the public's very... Um, they're very weird, aware and very key, uh, keen on the fact that people are sincere. And I think that you have to really work within um, your own personality and really find something that, you know, you are comfortable with, because if you, if you don't, if you fake it, you know, I think that really comes across mm -hmm. um, to your, to your clients, to your perspective, you know, 
prospective clients. Uh, and it just, it, it's inauthentic. Um, so I really think that it's important to be authentic, be true to yourself. You know, if you're, you know, whatever it is, you know, if you are the type of person who, you know, writes, you know, very flowerly, you know, language, go for it. If you're a person who just has a more direct demeanor, go, go with that. Um, I, I think it's important that you maybe look at what other people are doing because to just sort of ignore everyone, it's just, if they're competitors, it's foolish. But at the same time, you have to sort of take your own slant on things. Yeah. I, so I, that be, no, uh, thank you for that. So that would that be along the lines of differentiating yourself in the sea of competition, finding your own individual voice, your own individual persona? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, uh, you know, a lot of lawyers like to wear suits. Okay. I hate wearing suits. Okay. You can tell, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, and it's something that, you know, honestly, that, you know, if I go to court or something, of course, yeah, I'll put a suit on. Okay. But if I meet with clients, um, you know, I, I'm never wearing a suit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's just my, that's my thing. Okay. You can, some people may say, Hey, you know what? This guy's a slob, you know, whatever I can deal with it. But to mm -hmm. most people, you know what? I think they're, it, they're more comfortable with the yeah. fact that, you know, you're approachable, that you're, mm -hmm. you know, again, you're a genuine normal person okay you're not some uh highfalutin you know pompous uh attorney um and i think that's something that i've really just you know that's not that's not a, a shtick that's not an error that's really how i am uh i'm not you know uh, i'm not an arrogant you know uh person who's got an attitude who feels like oh i'm too good to do this or that um so, yeah, I mean, I think, it, it, again, it just goes back to the fact with to just what your personality is and sort of what works for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that leads me to another question, talking about being who you are. I noticed one of the things in your bio uh, that you believe in everything working together, making your business work for you, not against you, not your home life not your family. So could you talk about that piece? Because that's something that many people have a hard time with. They want the success, they're working really hard to it, but other important things fall to the side. Yeah, I, I mean, I just, you know, one of the things that I've learned and, and that I just really believe in tremendously is that, you know, work hard, play hard, uh, you know, and, you know, the, <laughs> I don't know if that's if that's you know where I got that from, but that was just something that I've always sort of you know done when when I was younger. You know, uh, I, I I was always you know I, I swam competitively in high school and college, and you know swimming is sort of one of those those again. It's one of those uh, sports where you know you could be the most talented person in the world, but if you're not putting the work in, it, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's sort of how you know most things in life are. Um, but what I really found was that, you know, when I was had the most success swimming, um, I tended to have, you know, a, a well-balanced life. You know, it, I was going out, you know, I was I was not someone who is typically, you know, going to sleep, you know, all the time, super early. Although, you know, when I when when things mattered and when the end of the year came around, I would settle down and I would buckle down and take care of business and I would, you know. You know, behave myself. But the truth is that, you know, um, you're going to burn out. If you are working seven days a week and, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours a day, um, that is not a maintainable uh, level of work for 99.9% .9 of people. Um, something has to give. And, you know, whether you acknowledge it or not, you know, your family, you know, your friends will certainly, you know, probably give you feedback. I mean, my wife, uh, my wife, my kids, they're very direct with me when, you know, I'm not being present, when I'm not really, you know, taking care of the things that I need to take care of um, at home. And, you know, is it always easy to do that? No. But the truth is, is that you know, I got to take a step back and I got to listen to them uh, and at least acknowledge it.
because if I don't, you know, it, uh, whatever work I have and whatever success I have, it's not really, it's not worth it if uh, the people who are important in my life, uh, they, they don't, they, they hate me. Um, so, and I think, it's, I just think it's something that people have to, you know, take assessment of. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really important. And especially in an era, you know, post pandemic, wherever we are in the stream of time. So many people have been, you know, they've become engrossed in their work. They're working from home and even being at home, you can forget about the people around you. And so striking that work about that work life balance is really hard, if especially when you're working from home. You know, that's really difficult. Uh, you know, I think that you have to put in, you know, whether, you know, you, you know, you're the type of person who likes to schedule things or not, but it's important that you break your day up, you know, that you get outside, um, that you take time for yourself. Um, and it sounds real hokey pokey a little bit. And, uh, but the truth is, is that, you know, I'm definitely more productive um, if I go out during the day and, um, you know, go out for a, a bike ride or, you know, go out for a workout or something in the middle of the day. And people look at me and be like, aren't you supposed to be, you know, working or whatever it is. And, it, you know, more often than not, when I go out, you know, if I go out for a workout or something during the day, um, I come back and I'm not only just refreshed and I'm ready to go, but I'm, I'm working through whatever issues I may have work-wise in my head while I'm, you know, engaged in that task. So um, it, that's something for me that I've been doing, you know, for a long time and that I really enjoy, but um you know, I would encourage people to give it a try. Yes, okay. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned swimming, and I haven't been swimming for a while, but I know my whole thing when people say, do you like to swim? And I say, yes, because that's the one time I cannot think about anything. <laughs> if I start thinking, I'm going to drown. I, I have only certain things. I'm like, stroke, stroke, breathe, stroke, stroke. That's all I can do. And so in that sense, it's very freeing for the mind. I mean, I do come out. I I do feel just that way. I'm yeah. ready to go. I'm relaxed, refreshed, and I have my energy resurfaces, which is really important. Well, you you know, if you're ever in Chicago, come uh, come. We'll go. We'll go for a swim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not during the winter. <laughs> I'm not going for a swim, and then come out and turn into a popsicle. <laughs> No, no, no. But I, I'm with you, though. You, you know, there is some truth to all everything you said. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're building your business relationships, what are some of the things that you look for in people that you, because you, I mean, we have the, the, the determination whether we want to work with somebody or we don't want to work for, with somebody. So what is it that you look for? You know, I guess one of the, the, uh, probably that one of the primary things is, you know, I've been working with, you know, I've got relationships with different attorneys around the country. You know, one of the nice things about my practice is that, you know, we are a personal injury medical malpractice law firm, but we also handle a lot of cases that, you know, really there's sort of a national scope almost, you know, we've, we handle, for example, we handle a fair amount of, um, uh, pharmaceutical recall cases, uh, drug, you know, dangerous drugs and things like that. We handle cases where people may have been abused, sexually abused um, in different areas of the country or whatever. And so um, what that has sort of done in the past, really the past, you know, five plus years, 10 years, it's really enabled me to, to develop relationships with other attorneys around the country. And I will tell you that the people that I've, you know, sort of been working with on those cases over the past, you know, five, 10 years, um, you know, the, everyone's got a different background. Everyone's got a different perspective on, on things. But one of the things that, that I like is that these people are really committed to, um, to the client. They're really committed to the case. Um, you know, they are reliable people. I can call them. I can email them pretty much any time uh, and they will be responsive. And I found that if someone, you know, is, you know, is willing to be responsive, um, pick up the phone, 
take care of business right away. That's the type of person that I want to work with, um, you know, now and in the future. I don't care how, what kind of credentials the person has, if they were in the, you know, top, top, you know, 1% of their class, or if they've, you know, done X, Y, and Z, if they are not responsive to me, I will tell you that they were, are probably not responsive to the client mm -hmm. and they're probably not responsive, you know, in court. And that's just going to lead to problems and headaches for me down the road. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it sounds real basic, but honestly showing up is sort of 90, you know, 80, 90% of the, uh, the battle. And if you are, you know, reliable, sincere, um, that's the type of person that I, I really want to work with. Um, I don't care really, you know, what your background is. I don't care about anything else. I, I want you to just, I want you to be, you know, a decent person too. Um, there's a lot of people who, especially in law, you know, and there's a lot of jokes about the, you know, lawyers being, you know, bad people and everything else. And I've seen some of them, they're horrible people. Mm. Um, but there are also some fantastic, you know, really genuine, really warm, committed people. And those are the people that I really want to, uh, associate with, frankly. Um, so, you know, is it hard to find these people? Um, depends, you know, I, I found I, that some of the people that I've worked with, you know, I've been working with for 15 plus years. Um, we talk almost, almost every day. Uh, there's other people that I've, you know, worked with and I said, good, goodbye and good riddance. You know, I never want to do it again. <laughs> I feel you on that because yeah. that's important. To me, I'm but I'm like that responsive, you know, mm -hmm. because I feel like if I'm talking to you, I ask you something or I send you something, then you know you should get back to me, and that makes me feel some kind of way if you don't. <laughs> well, I mean, again, this is this is just it sounds real basic, but if you're not, you know, if you're not returning, you know, calls or emails or whatever now. Um, you know, you know, sort of in the uh, in the courtship phase of a uh, relationship, you know, you're probably not going to do it, you know, six months or a year or five years down the road. And, you know, those are skills that like, you know, especially in today's day and age where things move so quickly that mm -hmm. if you're not, I find that if you're not sort of staying on top of things, you know, as they come at you, um, it, it just leads to problems down the road. Mm hmm. I agree. I definitely agree. So how can people get in touch with you? Well, you know, I guess, you know, the, the best and easiest way is to look at uh, the website, you know, RosenfeldInjuryLawyers.com. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got all my contact on there. Uh, you can look me up on YouTube. Uh, we've, we've done some personal injury podcasts. Uh, it's all over, you know, the personal injury podcast. But, you know, I'm, if anyone has any questions about law, about anything else, I'm happy to uh, to address it, and uh, I welcome the opportunity. Yeah, okay. I have a question for you because um, again, you spoke at the very beginning about how you came into becoming a lawyer, and law has been around for a long time. There will always be lawyers. There are young people right now who are sitting in your shoes. And some older ones who are grad, you know, coming out of graduate school, only to find out that they're in the wrong, so to speak, in the wrong place. So how, even though you found yourself working in a personal injury um, office, when did you know that this is what you want to do? And I'm asking this because people have to sort through what part of the law do they want to go into? So could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. You know, you know, I, I guess there's a lot of unhappy lawyers out there, um, very unhappy lawyers. You know, some of the most unhappy people I've encountered are attorneys. Um, and, I, I, you know, as far as, you know, uh, finding a their particular, you know, career path or whatever, you know, I guess the best the best thing they can do is to sort of talk to other attorneys and sort of see if, you know, not only is the work, you know, itself something they're interested in, but is that person happy? Is that person, you know, someone that they w would like to, you know, be to a certain degree? I mean, look, no one wants to be, you know, a copycat of anyone. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but is you know are they are they content? Um, do they are they satisfied? You know, family wise, or do they feel like they've got time? You know, there's just things that you can ask that are really not even legally related that are very telling about the um, the type of law that people practice. I find. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there are corporate attorneys that I know who really work, you know, 16, 18 hours a day. Um, they, they get tremendous, tremendous salaries. Um, but if you talk to a lot of these people and you say, you know, what do you think about your, your job? Um, you're going to get probably a, a very, um, delayed response. And then they'll say something like, oh, it's good or something very, very non-committal, very, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, very form at best. <laughs> and so I think it's important that, you know, for any person who's sort of starting out, they just sort of, you know, maybe they, they intern at a, uh, a law firm, they talk to lawyers, they network, they get out and you know what, try something. And you know what, if you don't like it, move on. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no award for, uh, trudging through misery for years and years on end. So find what you like and, and, you know, go for it. Yes. That's really important. That's such a, thank you so much. That is so important. And it actually applies in so many other areas too. There are so many people who are unhappy in their jobs and they stay there for all kinds of myriad reasons. And when you ask them, they're like, um, Um, (laughs) ask me another beer you know I just don't want to answer that question but it's really important because it affects and I think something we don't recognize sometimes is that when we're miserable it affects everyone around us it's something that you really can't contain your misery is it just spills over the top so thank you for answering that so honestly that that was awesome yes and I can tell that you're a really down to earth person if I needed a lawyer, I would call you because you are personable. Yes, you know, you, are, you feel to me what you bring out is you're approachable. Mm-hmm. You know, I can tell you something that I may not feel comfortable telling another lawyer because they might be too stuffed shirt for me, or they, you know, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I like well, that. Damn. Well, thank you, thank you. I mean, that, yeah, that makes I a lot. That means a lot because, you know, honestly, that's sort of what at the end of the day, you know, if I, you know, I can do everything and and I can, you know, write, you know, go to court and everything. But at the end of the day, you know, my job is to sort of represent clients. And if I don't have an if the client isn't really comfortable, you know, relaying their situation to me. I can't relay that to a jury. I can't relay that to a judge. I can't relay that to a mediator. So, you know, I I guess, you know, I I just try to be as, you know, direct with people as I can. I try to tell them the the positive sides of their case. I try to tell them the negative sides of their case. Um, And I I think that really, you know, people appreciate that. And I, I think it really, you know, jurors are very are much smarter than most people give them credit for um mm. you know they may not they may never have been to law school they may not have never have studied law they may not even really frankly they may not even understand the case but when <laughs> they went no which which is fine frankly yeah. but the truth is is that you know when they see someone that they can relate to um i think that goes a long way and it really does really you know it's ultimately it's reflected in the uh a uh, verdict or settlement for a client. So I, I, I really appreciate that uh, feedback. And, uh, you know, I will certainly keep trying to do that. Yes. And you do it naturally. So it's no trying for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This has been very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, learned a lot. And, you know, it's what we've always, you know, Ruth and I have always known. Be who you are. Keep, you know, keep working at what you're doing, even if it's like 20 minutes a day, you sitting down doing something and take time to live. So I'm just happy that you brought that out because, I mean, a lot of times when you think of an attorney, you think of that 18 hour a day, you know, shift sort of thing, you know, like they work all the time. 
And like you said, I've met plenty of attorneys that they just seem unhappy. Mm-hmm. You can just see it all over their face. <laughs> Even in the way that they, they may show up in a suit and tie, but it doesn't help them. <laughs> it doesn't help that. No. It's so misery. <laughs> it doesn't, that just doesn't change. And you can see it. You can really see it. And uh, it, you know, I don't want to work with somebody that's unhappy, yeah. you know, for whatever reason. Because like in your case, we can see you happy. I mean, yeah. as soon as I talk to you, it's like, it just came right out. <laughs> there's, a, there's always a glow when you're doing and walking in your purpose. Yes. And you were fortunate you found your purpose or your purpose found you. Uh, either way, I'll take I'll take what I can get. You know, yeah. a little luck, a little luck yeah. here and there. You know, it doesn't hurt either. But, uh, yeah. you know, whatever. You know, you just got to find it and take it and, you know, keep right. moving on. So, um, yeah. but thank you guys. It's very, very nice to talk with you ladies. It was good nice talking with you, you too. too. And again, how can people get in touch with you? So that way, hit, hit it up on the uh, punch it in on the uh, browser. Rosenfeld Injury Lawyers. Uh, look me up on uh, YouTube. I'm on uh, every uh, every platform, but you know the web, the website's sort of the uh, the main uh, homepage, if you will. So, um, but reach out. You know, if you have a question about law, personal injury. Happy to talk with you. Happy to help you. Yeah. All righty now. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You'll be back. <laughs> I look yeah. forward to it anytime. And I would love to, you to dig in more on personal injury because so many people are in that position and don't know how to act, don't know what to say. Sometimes, like I just said, you find yourself with the wrong lawyer. You don't know what to do. So... That's our next one. We can have a little series going. I love this. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. All righty. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co host, Ruth Hatton. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.